Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. We're hearing more and more in the news of Muslim youth who are involved in gangs, Dr. Shabir. And recently we heard particularly disturbing news that there were some Muslims who were burying one of their dead teens um, as a result of violence. And um, at that funeral, some people came up and they, you know, attacked some other people. They shot some other people and one person was killed. So, Dr. Shabir, I know that the imams are particularly disturbed by what's going on and concerned. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so imams are concerned because, first of all, this has happened at, at a Muslim cemetery. Mm -hmm. In Second, Toronto. In, yeah. yeah, in the Toronto area. And um, secondly, it, it involves Muslims. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, the, the person who was being buried uh, is one of our youth, a 27-year-old uh, person who was uh, in a social club at the time. And actually, he was uh, reportedly wearing uh, traditional Muslim garb, like, like I'm wearing, you know, with cap and uh, long uh, gown and sporting a beard as well. Uh, so, it, it, you know, it, it raises the alarm, like, how, why are youth being killed in the first place? And then, uh, when the, in, the, in the midst of the funeral proceedings, to find that, uh, you know, people generally, like even gangs, um, avoid uh, harming people at funerals. Like funeral is like a no-go zone, right? Mm -hmm. You keep your violence everywhere else, but you respect the funeral. And, and for this level of uh, sacrilegiousness to occur, th this is shocking. So two persons at the funeral were shot. Uh, one uh, died. He's only 26 years old. The other injured, 27 years old. Uh, uh, so uh, the, the police called uh, the head of the Canadian Council of Imams right away to alert him to, to what is happening here. And uh, you might ask why this, why, why this um, uh, news sharing. Well, it's more than news sharing. You see, the, there is a level of cooperation between uh, Muslim imams uh, and I suppose other faith leaders in the country as well. Um, and the police, on the other hand, uh, the police recognize that uh, they are there to enforce the law. Um, of course, they say to serve and protect. Uh, part of that is enforcing the law. And often it is after the crime has been committed. Uh, but they're counting on us imams to uh, help to prevent crime uh, by steering people in the right direction, by molding them spiritually and culturally and, you know, give them good ethics and morals. Uh, so that uh, people can avoid crime, and especially the youth. Mm -hmm. uh, so this has got the imams talking um, and discussing ideas and, and uh, seeing this as a problem and thinking about what we need to do about this problem to prevent it in the future. Mm -hmm. Dr. Shabir, it seems like you know, the need to, to join a gang arises because of a breakdown in the family and in society, right? In, so, in some way, we're failing the, the, these youth. And many of them are attracted to gangs because, you know, they think they might get that reputation, you know, that respect that they want. Maybe they know somebody who is beloved to them, who was in a gang, for example. Um, maybe they want to show loyalty to their neighborhood. There, there are a lot of different reasons why people would join a gang. What is your advice, Dr. Shabir, from the Islamic perspective as a faith leader? You mentioned that the police are consulting faith leaders. So what is your advice to somebody who might consider joining a gang or wants to join a gang? Yeah, and just to be clear, Sophia, um, you know, I'm not aware that there's been any official declaration that uh, this violence was a result of, uh, of gangs uh, or involved gangs. Um, though some people have suggested that mm -hmm. uh, because of the whole uh, scenario, it looks like payback at the funeral mm -hmm. for, you know, the, the, the death of one and so on. But but God knows the uh, best about this. But but the imams have got to talking about gang violence and and you know how to prevent this in the in the future. And and they have come to um, you know various imams have uh, mentioned their personal knowledge of gangs from among ethnic communities within the larger Muslim population. And just a quick search on the internet would bring up, you know, the uh, knowledge that uh, there, there are various gangs in, in various ethnic communities. And uh, so, so, so that is something that Muslims have to be concerned about, Muslim leaders in particular need to be concerned about, and the wider Canadian population as well. Like we're all citizens of this great country, we want to prevent violence, uh, we don't want gangs to take root, we want to uh, eliminate this and snuff it out. But how? So one of the issues uh, is, you know, the, the social conditions in which many of the youth uh, live, especially those who 
uh, come from immigrant parents. They find themselves in uh, sometimes uh, a certain degree of social isolation uh, that is characterized by poverty, a ghettoish type of existence. Uh, you know, in, in a country that's largely flourishing. So, you know, why are some people living in imp impoverished conditions or in neighborhoods uh, that can give rise to the um, existence of such gangs? Um, what about youth employment uh, and so on? So uh, we all have to think about some of these uh, issues. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Shabir, can you speak from the Islamic perspective? Like, is there so any sort of guidance, let's say, from the Quran that could steer us away from gangs? Yes, uh, what we're saying to our youth is that, uh, first of all, we need to be connected to the Quran as the book of God, and we need to follow it assiduously. And uh, the Quran tells us that we are to cooperate in doing good things. In the fifth chapter of the Quran, cooperate with each other in, in piety and righteousness. Uh, and do not cooperate with others in sin and, and transgression. Uh, so uh, gangs are exactly that, they, you know, people cooperating with each other, joining together, ganging up to do ev evil things, to commit crime and to do wrong things. Uh, a, a Muslim cannot go that route. Uh, we stress also that we, we need to think about the friends that we, that we take because the, the Quran tells us, so, be with the truthful people. And if we are with truthful people and we are pledging ourselves to be truthful of ourselves, then we, we cannot commit crime because if you commit crime, you have to hide it. You have to lie in order to camouflage. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you are uh, committed to always speaking the truth and you are with people who are always speaking the truth, well, then you're not going to commit crime and you are with people who, who are not going to commit crime. Uh, we, we also stress uh, more uh, about taking your, your, the right friends that the Quran tells us in the 25th verse, chapter, in the 26th and 27th verse, about uh, people who will regret on the Day of Judgment about the friends that they have taken. Uh, they will say, Ya wailata laitani lam attakhid fulan and khalila. Uh, oh, woe is me. Uh, I, I wish that I had not taken such and such a person as a friend. Lakad adallani an idhikri ba'da an idja'ani. Uh, I, that person has led me away from the reminder, uh, uh, meaning the Quran, uh, uh, or the message from God, after it has come to me. So, you know, if you think of a child growing up in a Muslim home, uh, having a Muslim identity, that child is already exposed to the zikr, to the, remem the reminder, the message that came from God, the Quran. And uh, if that uh, youth, then if that child grows up in, in, in his or her youthful uh, age, uh, then turns away from that guidance, it could often be because of ganging up with, with friends. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to say something here because uh, every uh, mother is going to say, you know, my child was a good ch child, <laughs> uh, is a good child, it's just the friends that led my child astray. But what happens is that when people gang up like this, there, there is a kind of group mentality that takes over. Like each child by himself or herself uh, were, were good persons. But when they come together, uh, a new dynamic enters the picture. They want to impress other, each other, they dare each other to do wrong things, uh, and, and so on. So we, we have to be aware of that group dynamic and be uh, aware of the friends that we're taking so that the friends will not lead us astray, nor might we lead them astray due to that uh, gang mentality. And I mentioned his or, or her, like, you know, I don't know if that piques your interest at all, uh, because what some of the imams are pointing out is that some of the gangs have uh, women as well, mm -hmm. well, young women, girls. Um, so, you know, all of this is alarming to, to me in particular. Dr. Shabir, I've heard anecdotally and also, you know, I've done some research and I've, I've discovered that, you know, people who join gangs don't remain in it forever. You know, they're, they're there for one year or for two years. Um, and, and for most people, you know, especially if you're in the periphery, if you're not necessarily somebody who's in the core of the gang, it's more likely that you'll leave after a while. So I think that's really good for people to know, because sometimes people think, I can't leave the gang, there'll be repercussions. But knowing that the vast majority of people do leave suggests that there is a way out. Yes, and that's good news, and we're happy to hear things like that. And uh, we would encourage the youth to rethink their situation, to plan for the rest of their lives. Um, you know, I used to listen to Zig Ziglar, a motivational speaker from the United States of America, 
And uh, one of the things that he stressed was that always think that today is the first day of the rest of your life. So don't, don't worry about what has passed because you can't change that. But what you do today can affect the rest of your life. So uh, even though you've been in there for a couple of years, think of making a new start in life that is not gang related. Thank you for sharing that, Akshibir. You're welcome. Our videos reach people all over the world. We hope you will seize the opportunity to share in the reward from God. Please support us today.